Welcome back to another episode of Treasure Seekers Virtual Adventures. My name is Sarah with an H and I'll be your host again today. Today's episode is gonna be a little different than our usual. I'm gonna do another virtual shelling tour. So we're gonna kinda take you with a GoPro out on the beaches to see what we find. But today's is a little more specific. We're gonna talk about shelling at a high tide and a low tide. So you're gonna get to see shelling in the same island, the same beach, the same conditions on the same day, but we're gonna do it at a low tide in the morning and then this afternoon we'll be back at the high tide so you can see what the difference is. But first, we're gonna talk about what the tides are, what they mean, how to use them to your best advantage as a beachcomber. So stick around, let's get started. So we just landed super early in the morning on one of our sandbars and I wanted to stand up here and kind of show you this is a super low tide today where I'm standing right here where you can see kind of the rack lines where all that chunky stuff is. That's usually where the water's at on this island, usually between here and kind of right here. And today's low tide is super low. so. Usually what I recommend to folks is to kind of zigzag up and down the hill until they find a really productive chunky spot. Like right here, you can see a bunch of heavy, large shells. I'll tilt you down here. There's a nice little cone. Yay, Florida cones. And even if you want to get wet, you can go down into the water's edge and you can see even more shells packed in. Ooh, there's a nice little nutmeg. <clears throat> That's a good one. Now this is one of the benefits of being the first on the beach. If there's nobody really out here, you kind of have first pick, but it is a little cold and in Florida we have these little things called noceums, which will probably eat you alive first thing in the morning. And as the sun comes up, it'll get a little better. Fortunately, today it's winter and fairly chilly. We just had a cold front, so no bugs today, which is awesome. I'm gonna go back up the hill. You guys can see a lot of these little fighting conks. Here's another one. And they're alive. These low tides expose a lot of the mollusks that are alive and other animals that might get stranded or exposed. <clears throat> so just a reminder, please don't collect live shells. It's illegal in most areas. And it isn't really ethical shelling practices. It's not really good for the um, ecosystem if you take live stuff. And they won't be able to have any babies. Oh, look at these little sea urchin donuts. Whoops. Those are cool. Here's two in a row. Look at that. Match set. That's the bottom piece of a sea urchin where the mouth would be. Sea urchin tests is what it's called. The remains of that little shell. Those are. Um, super fragile so definitely carry a box with you or a little container to um, find those keep them safe get them home <clears throat> horseshoe crab molts that's kind of neat so yeah so i'm going to continue walking up and down the hills and i'll show you guys various things that i pick up um, it's gonna be really interesting today because we have a super low tide with that big moon. I don't know if you can see it. 
when the moon is full, it's a really dramatic tide. So we have it much higher or much lower than usual. So today's like the perfect day to be out. And uh, <clears throat> hopefully we'll be able to find some really cool stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the tide. You can get really complicated with the science of the tides, but I'm gonna explain it to you for the purposes of beachcombing, okay? If you'd like to do more research, please feel free to do that, but I'm gonna explain it as you would need to know as a beginner, okay? So basically, the tide is affected by the gravitational pull of the moon and the earth. If you think about the planetary alignment situation there, we have gravity from the moon, gravity from the earth, pulling and pushing on the water, which is a fluid motion on the earth all the time. So here in the 10,000 islands, we have a high tide and a low tide twice a day. So it comes in, it goes out, it comes in again, and it goes out again every day. And every high tide and low tide may change. So it's not like you're gonna stick a stick in the sand and okay, this is the high tide, I'll come back tomorrow, it'll be in the same spot. It will change. Now there's a lot of math and science that goes into that, but what you need to know is most people, okay, not everybody, most people believe that the lowest tide is really the best time to go shelling or beachcombing. And that's because the farther away the water is from the land, the more land you have exposed, which we see here this morning. So if you have more land exposed, you have more spaces to explore and look, and debatably, there may be more shells available to see. So I'm kind of walking along the water's edge here, and I'm a good 40 or 50 feet from the regular tide line. So I can see a lot of beach here, there's a lot of room, and most people will believe that that's gonna be the best time to go, which may be true. Keep in mind also that if you go first thing in the morning, you might be the first one there, early bird gets the worm, that's pretty true, but it might not be the lowest tide first thing in the morning. The tides will change throughout the day. So today, it's just like the sunrise time. It could be at 6 a.m. tomorrow, it could be at seven or whatever the, the timing is. So the best way to really find out when the low tide is, is to just download an app. There are many, many apps that are extremely helpful, or you can always go online and ask Google, hey, at such and such beach, when is low tide? And that will tell you. It could be the middle of the day, it could be at night, it could be at two in the morning, you really don't know. So um, try to look it up if you can, if you're really focused on trying to go at a low tide. If it really doesn't matter to you and you just wanna go first thing in the morning and be alone on the beach and have some peaceful time and quiet, that's totally fine too. There are different schools of thought about what's the most productive. So. There isn't really a right answer. A lot of people will have their opinion about what works for them. Personally, I like going at low tide because you can see more and I really enjoy seeing the live animals too. So, but that's my opinion. So anyway, we're gonna get started here and just kind of walk around and look at what is exposed. And I'm really excited about the big moon over here. When we have a big full moon, you get a more dramatic tide. So instead of having your average low, it could be extra low. Which actually brings up another point, what is a negative tide? Well, negative low tides is when the water level is below sea level. And here in the 10,000 islands, that does happen, especially in the winter time. Now, some places in the world, you're gonna have major changes of tides. So like in Canada, the Bay of Fundy, they have this bay that has like 50 feet of water coming in and going out every time the tide turns. So they have constant movement of massive amounts of water. Our tide changes are not quite that dramatic. And what I'm getting at here is every place in the world is gonna be different. So just because you don't live in Southwest Florida doesn't mean that you're not gonna have good tides, but where you are, it's probably gonna be a different level. It's gonna be a different height of water. In the 10,000 islands, we have a lot of sandbars that are super shallow and they move around. And um, when the tide comes in and out, we really have to pay attention when we're boating out there because if we go out when it's super deep or low and you run into a sandbar, it's usually not good. So keep your eyes out, pay attention, try to do your research ahead of time. 
And of course, if you go beachcombing, make sure you don't get to an area where you can't walk back. If you go out at super low tide and you're there for hours and then the tide comes in and blocks your path back, that's not so good. So pay attention to that or go with somebody who knows the area well. Happy shelling, guys. Let's, uh, let's get started on our, our virtual shelling section. Okay, so here we're coming up to this chunky pile and you can see, let me turn you a little bit. The beach actually has kind of a slope to it and a lot of these heavier shells, the chunky stuff, at least in this area, are kind of rolling down towards the bottom of the hill and they're collecting in these kind of depressions. Now we, again, have had some wind recently, so there's a lot of stuff that's been kind of pounded into this sand and it's all packed in here. So look, we've got all these fighting conks, these arc shells. There's a really pretty lightning whelk right here. Come here, you. Look at that. He might need a little bit of love cleaning, but he's in good shape. No significant damage. We've got little lace murex. Ooh, this is cool. Look at this one. Oh, well, maybe not. I thought this might be an albino fighting conch, but I'm not 100% sure. He's got some color on the inside. What else? <clears throat> okay, so lots of tulips here. Banded tulips. And some of these, look, I'm having to dig out with my fingers. So if you want to bring like a, a little garden rake, that's very common. Just in case you hit one of these like really compacted piles. Here's another banded tulip. He's got some barnacles. <clears throat> and these chunky areas, look, do you see that right there? You really want to slow down. A lot of people just take off down the beach, but look, there's so much packed in here that you can barely see. You really want to look closely because some things you're only going to see like a corner of it. This is a um, little lace murex. It's super sandy, but look at that. That whole thing, and we only saw just the corner, especially shells that are like white or brown. They kind of blend in with sand. See, there was another one. Oh, here it is. See that? See the spines? You only see a portion of them sometimes. This is so satisfying to pull them out of here. I'm not gonna lie. Beautiful. Ooh, big old pen shell. Hmm. Ooh, there's a nice olive. All in one pile, you got all these shells. And I know some people have said in the past, like, why are you passing up all these other ones? You have to understand, I'm not really shelling today to collect. I'm trying to show you guys more about what the beaches look like. And um, everybody's attracted to different things. So just because somebody doesn't pick up the shells that you might, doesn't mean that they're bad shells or that, you know, my favorite are better than your favorite. But not everyone's drawn to the same things. Not everybody wants to collect the same things. Or if you're like me, your husband won't let you bring any more home and you probably have 10 million of a certain kind already. Ooh, look at this one. Look at this giant lace murex. Huge. That's a really nice one. Super nice. Hmm. I also love people's comments have said like, hey, you missed this one. <laughs> or like, I'll be looking for something specific and I'm like, I don't see one. People are like, oh, I zoomed in, it's right there. Of course I don't see it. There's a good Apple Murex. Okay, I think you get the idea. And if you're, uh, if you're like most of our beachcombers, this pile would excite you. You could probably sit here for hours and hours and hours just digging through. But I do want to get to the rest of the island and kind of show you. Look over here, we've got a big, <clears throat> something big. This is another thing I try to recommend to people. Slow down, take your time, and look around because when you get so focused on the, um, the shell in front of you, you miss 
a lot of other things. Look at this guy, or girl, actually. This is a female lightning whelk, alive. You can tell it's alive because it's got this big bubble of sand where the foot is displacing it down there. I'm not gonna disturb her, but look at the size of this shell. Oh, here we go. This is my hand. Look at that. Here's the tip. It goes all the way down here. Amazing. Amazing. All right, let's keep walking. All right, so I've just found another cluster, not too far away from the other one, actually. And if you look up here, it is, again, kind of like the base of this hill. And because we run tours out here pretty frequently, I can tell you that this area where I'm standing is normally about, I don't know, knee deep water, maybe ankle deep, depending. Now, it's not that you can't see the shells in that kind of water, but it does make it challenging. There's some good apple murex sandy. I should just carry like a little spray bottle. I can rinse them off without having to walk to the water. <clears throat> Look at all that. Ooh, there's a little cone. A little Florida cone. Cute. Um, ooh, look at that. Okay, this is a great example. Do you see the speckles right here? This is something, if you're just walking along the beach, which, okay, if you're a walker, seriously, there's no judgment, but you do miss out on quite a few little treasures like this. See those speckles? Ooh. I'm gonna try to dig that out. That's an alphabet cone, and it's a big one. Yes, oh, look at that. Chunky. Beautiful. And, there's another one right here. Partially buried. Sweet. Alphabet cones this early in a trip is usually a really good sign. You're gonna have some good shells. Oh, here's a nice horse conch. Little baby or schmedium, if you will. Oh, there's a gaudy nautica stuck in there. So you might find yourself huddled on some of these piles for a while, which is okay. I've even had guests bring out like little chairs or stools if they don't like walking and um, they're just trying to sit and dig. Look at this horse conch. Oh, that's a good schmedium right there. He's a little faded, but that's okay. He'll clean up. That's a good one. <clears throat> yeah, this will really test your brain. If you think you're a good sheller, you know, you've got most of the shells memorized, you know, you're looking for certain species. This will make you think because you really, you only see like the tail or the shoulder of one of them. Once you can start identifying them by their little bits, ooh, there's another cone. Then you're really, really in it for good. That's a nice cone. Oops. Sweet. And another cluster. And see, I'm just kind of going from one cluster to another. Here's another cone. You can barely see, let me zoom down here. You can barely see the speckles on this guy. And the sun's, it's in the shadow here. So look, see how it's just a little bit of pattern? Yeah, he's got some barnacles. Look at that, that's so cool. And a nice banded tulip over here. Oh yeah. And then, you know, this little pile kind of stops and then it's, it's, you know, 30 feet before another one and that's okay. And you know what? Sometimes there's more stuff like in between the piles up on the hill or maybe down in the water. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna keep walking a little more cause I don't see any super thick piles. Let's see what else I can find out here.
So I walked all the way out to the water's edge again and this island, you know, I was on land way back there. So this is kind of like a, a little sandbar that comes out. Look at all this live stuff. We got, these are little uh, olives. If you like the lettered olives, this is what they look like alive. They tunnel through the sand. So cute. There's a little hermit crab over here. Look at that. Hey buddy, good morning. But as you can see, not too many shells. It's really flat over here. And you can see the runs where the water comes in and drains. So since there isn't a whole lot, I'm gonna go back up onto the mainland and kind of go up the hill and see maybe at some of those high tide areas. Ooh, this is kind of cool. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm looking down. Look at this little guy, can you see him? This is a scallop that's still alive. I don't know how close I can get him in focus here. One side is white and the other side is kind of pink. Huh. That's always neat to see. <clears throat> Calico scallop, that's what that one is. All right. I'm gonna go back up the beach a bit and see what's up high. So as you're traveling along, the mud flats, you might see these like big barnacled rock things kind of off in the distance. You know, I suggest investigating anything big and rock like because here it could be a giant shell. Look at this. This is a horse conch. This is a really nice one. Well, he's a little chipped right here, but. The barnacles, don't let the barnacles deter you. Those can be cleaned off. Look at that guy, wow. And this was just sitting here. And you only saw just, just the top of it sticking up. And from the distance, I thought it was just like a pen shell or something, but still investigate, because you really don't know. Ooh, there's something else big over here, let's look. Yeah, so this is actually, see this big rock thing? This is actually a cockle shell when you get up close. If you've never seen a cockle shell, and he's alive, see his little flesh in there? That's so cool. These are so beautiful. And this is one that we see a lot, I'll rinse them off, in the uh, low tides as well. Super beautiful. All right, we'll leave him. But it's good to check because you really never know. Okay, let's keep going around here, up to our hill. Okay, so I know it's probably hard to see because all the sand looks the same, but I did walk uphill a little bit, and there's actually another depression up here. You can see this dark stuff. This is like another tide pooling area. You can see the runs in the, um, in the sand down here where the water drained out. These spots are good to check out for shells too. Anything with like a low depression, that's a really good indicator you might find some good stuff in there. Oh, I did look, not as much in that one. It's already dried. Um, but if there's like water in there, like an actual tide pool, that's a really good place to look. So here we have a little older shells. You can tell the sand has been blown around over top of these. But that doesn't mean you can't find cool stuff. I know you can see my shadow, sorry. I did have one person complain, but hey, my shadow is kind of cute. I can't control the shadow. <laughs> We're gonna go back down into this, this big tide pool here. See the sandbar over there? On this island, we can usually find some good stuff out into these tide pools. Usually, again, not an exact science here. today I guess. Ooh, there's a live one. I won't pick them up but you can kind of see that lightning whelk. Sort of kind of. Can you see? Yeah. More live stuff. Look at 
all these. So everything that's protruding out of the sand right here, <laughs> those are all alive. more sand dollars around. Look at that. Yesterday my guest picked up, must have been 50 or 60 sand dollars. <clears throat> Which is impressive, but what's more impressive is getting them home in one piece. <laughs> By the way, secret little tip here. If you're carrying sand dollars home, like a great distance, like flying home, you can always put them in a loaf of bread. I know that sounds really disgusting, but if you buy a loaf of bread and you put the sand dollars or, or really any fragile shell in between the slices and travel with it that way, it'll pad them in such a way they won't smush together or chip. People have all kinds of tricks and of course use what works for you, but I've heard a lot of good results have come from that bread trick. Of course, don't eat the bread. That. that is so beautiful. Look at that view. Look at there's something else big in the water over here. Oh, it might be a horseshoe crab. Yep. Yeah, and it looks like this one's alive. Maybe. Oh, let me tilt you down. There you go. Are you alive? No? Oh, no, I guess not. Oh, it's just a molt. Okay. Well, we investigated. Horseshoe crabs are amazing animals. If you haven't heard of those before, if you don't have those where you are, look them up. Horseshoe crabs. They are really cool. Been around for a really long time. So this sandbar is pretty flat, but you're kind of if you look down here, you can see like this sand is really solid. It's not super mushy like, like mud. Um, so in this space, you're not really looking for, you know, down at your feet, every tiny little shell. You kind of want to look up and look around because things that are impacted down in the sand, they're going to be sticking up. Here's something cool. All right, who knows what this is? Science time. This is so gross. <laughs> This is called, uh, whoops, here, I think I lost you. Let me tilt you down here. This is sea pork. Yeah, if you follow us on social media, you've seen sea pork before. This one's really bright orange, it's really pretty. Sea pork is actually alive. It's a colony of sea tunicates. Um, basically, they're little filter feeder animals that stick together. They filter the water like a sponge would. And uh, they're not really, you know, good for much else like nobody eats them or anything it's not something you would keep it definitely will smell so don't take them home and they are alive so but we get them in blobs of all varieties different colors I've seen them in purple gray yellow orange pinkish it's actually one of my favorite things to freak out children on tours <laughs> I admit I kind of make them jump if they pick it up I'm like oh touch it ah Small confessions. Okay, here's another live lightning whelk. You can see the bubble of sand here. So this one's alive. It's definitely got its foot out under there. I'm gonna leave it. But you can see, like, it's just, just sticking out of the sand. Kinda looks like a rock. So this whole sandbar is totally submerged in water on a normal day. And when I first got out here, the tide was still outgoing. So we might even see more land here in the next hour. And I'm like, over where those trees are, if you look just in front of it, there's a little strip of sandbar. That's normally where I'd be shelling right now on a normal tide. This is a super low tide. And you can get all the way out here. Look, here's another piece of sea pork. Sea pork. This one's kind of yellow, and he's attached to a pen shell piece here. You can almost like see through it. Isn't that weird? Isn't that such a weird thing? It's so cool. 
This ecosystem is so cool. There's so many like weird, strange things, alien-like, that are just, everything just fits together exactly how it should. They all have a role, they all have a purpose. As alien as it is to us, it makes perfect sense in this ecosystem. Ooh, here's a nice little paper fig. These are delicate, hard to find in one piece. So definitely put that one in your box too if you find some. All right, let's wade in the water here. Ooh. A big sand dollar, oh my God, look at that. That's like a pancake. Now, if you are at a place where you'll find live sand dollars, you can tell they're alive because they're gonna have fuzz like little spines, almost like velvet, all the way around their little body, and they're gonna be dark brown. And if you look close, they will be moving. You never wanna take a live one. This one's already dead. You can tell there's no spines on it, and he's starting to bleach already. Look at the veining. Man, that's beautiful. Yeah, so if you're in the water, we do the, uh, <laughs> in Florida, we do the um, stingray shuffle, or the sand dollar shuffle, if you're, Sheller, which really just means shuffle your feet so you don't step and break live sand dollars or accidentally step on a stingray, which is not pleasant. Okay, so there wasn't a whole lot over there, a lot of like plant debris. But I wanted to show you this. Can you see this like dark line where the waves are lapping? This little water line kind of tapers off. Even some of these sticks like get fewer and fewer as you go up the hill. That's where the water slowly recedes, right? It's depositing things as it goes out. So later on this afternoon, we'll see what it looks like when the tide is in, but I want to point out that don't just walk, you know, in the water all the way out into the mud flat. Also go up the hill because the water has deposited things all the way along the way out. And uh, we found some really cool stuff there on some days. Look down here, we have a uh, big angel wing. Oh, sharp. Ouch. Cool. Another one for your delicate box there. Fragile. Okay. We keep going.
I just found this big horse conch. And he's alive, look at that. See the foot? He's orange. And the shell on this one is one of those orange ones. That is super nice. Oh. Whoops, camera's going all weird. Here we go. Look at that. That would clean up really nice. Maybe let me rinse it so you guys can see. He is orange. Even orange on the tip, that's super nice. That's gonna be a nice shell for somebody when he's when he's gone. I'm gonna put it back. I try to put them back facing the way I found them so they don't have to flip themselves over later. <laughs> try to be nice. Look at this little trough right here. The sand comes around that way. I found a rake, by the way. Somebody dropped it, I think. Anyway. The water just drained right out of this section, so it's deposited all these shells along the shelf. And that's what we're gonna look at. Just see if there's anything super nice. Ooh, that's super nice, look at this. This is an albino lightning whelk. No color at all. That's super nice. Hello, gorgeous. What else you got over here? Hmm, and again, my head is looking, I'm looking side to side, I'm looking over here, I'm looking right up against the hill, even on the hill. You kind of want to rotate around because not everything's going to be in a perfectly straight line. If it is, great. But that happens so rarely. Crunch. Ooh. Here's a nice cone. He's a little faded, a little alphabet cone. That's okay. You got to put something in the middle of the jar, right? Here's a little. Oh, nope. Piece. Piece of a tulip. <clears throat> the afternoon portion of our episode today. The tide has come in quite a bit and I'm back at the same island and uh, it's gonna be a little different today uh, for this section because there's a lot more people here now. There's some private boaters and picnickers so I'll have to walk around some other folks and give them their space which is we just want to be respectful of course. I'll still do some shelling in and out of the same space as I was in before so you can get an idea of the difference and what it looks like. So let's get started. Okay, so here's that first corner of the beach that I was on before. Here's some of these rack lines we saw before. And we were shelling in the sandbar right over there this morning. So this afternoon, now that the tides come in, as you can see, there's still quite a bit of shell bits up here to shell in and search through. Here's a good lightning whelk. Seems to be a trend today. Very cool. <clears throat> here a little bit sun bleach this is kind of neat this is a dried out egg casing from a tulip a banded tulip if you haven't looked into egg casings yet definitely uh, ask your shell guide or do some research because the egg casings is something really cool to investigate if you get the chance all the different snails and mollusks have totally different egg casings so I came down the hill a little bit and here's this other rock line I'm gonna work for a bit. We do find some things. Here's a nice lace murex. Another angel wing. Baby one. Some 
smaller bivalves. A lot of scallops in here. A lot of your typical clams, cockles. Here is another lace murex. Yeah, this is the same spot I was in this morning and we were out on the, the sandbars way over there. And right now, this is what we have to work with. So this is what we're gonna do. Here we've got little cockles. Super cute yellow cockle. scallops. Actually this is a good time if you're into those flat scallops. Those are kind of unusual to see so if you're after one of those definitely want to be walking on the hills and on the sides of the hills. That's usually where they're found. They don't roll easily either so <clears throat> I'll keep my eye out for those today. Another sea feather. Maybe the same one from this morning. into these piles the drop off into in between uh, this main section and the sandbar out there is pretty far on the water you'd have to get in at least knee deep right now to get out there <clears throat> these guys super cute really cool to uh, acid dip if you haven't done any um, shell cleaning with the muriatic acid we just talked about that in one of our previous episodes so go back and watch that and the uh, the top snails if you acid dip them a little longer than usual usually we'd recommend about three seconds in the mixture but if you leave them in there a little longer all this brown skin comes off and they turn into these beautiful reflective kind of mother of pearl gems. They're really pretty. And the darker, the brown skin, like if it's one of those really dark, almost reddish brown colors, then the under layer is gonna be super, super purple. Oh, here's a nice tulip right on the shoreline. starts to get really really mushy so there's mud and things are starting to get compacted here so this might be a good area to explore some more just in case there's big stuff stuck oh there's a speckles that's just a broken piece of a alphabet cone bummer you always get that little jump of joy when you think you see spots but again zigzagging up here just above where the water is Keep your head on a swivel because there might be some really neat stuff where the water used to be. If you 
feel like you want to put live ones back in the deep water, you can. It won't hurt them, of course, but most of them are pretty used to getting stranded out at these lower, higher tides areas, so they kind of bury themselves down in the sand if they want to, or they might scooch around on land for a little while, so <clears throat> they're used to that. You don't have to do that, but uh, another way to look at it too is that, well, if he's out of the water, I mean, the birds have to eat too, so it might be his really bad day. If the beach is completely covered in them, <clears throat> you know, after a storm that happens a lot, you can feel free to help a few. But don't feel bad if you can't save them all. There's a lot of cockles and clams up here. Here's an olive. It's the first olive I've seen this afternoon. Pretty nice one. If you look up just a little bit up on the hill over here, again, a lot of these flat shells, the bivalves, clam scallops, cockles, maybe some oysters. I'm going back down. I always find myself zigzagging. Sorry if it makes you dizzy. back there where the water would tide pool and it's drained out since but the top of the hill it's a lot of bleached out shells but sometimes if you dig around kick stuff you might be able to find something that's fresh and maybe got buried under there so it's been protected from the sun look at this little guy what a cute little sand dollar you know this isn't a true sand dollar though <clears throat> yeah he's definitely not a real one. That's because he's only 50 cents. Ha, uh, get it? It's really hard to tell jokes on cameras, okay? It's one of my very few shell jokes I have. There's not that many in the world. If you have some, hit me up in the comments. I need new material. <laughs> Back down the hill. you go and I get back to you later but I'm just walking along here every time I thought I would turn it off and just keep walking I would find something new that you might like to see so this is interesting so here you can see like there's a little less shells here than there are further further along You'll start to see a lot of these jingle shells, which are these really small, kind of iridescent see-through shells. Those are really cool to collect and put into jars. They make a really cool clinking sound like money if you shake them around, hence their name, jingle shell. People make wind chimes and stuff out of them. But in these little fields, if you will, of jingle shells, that's where a lot of those flat scallops tend to blend in. So keep your eye out. <clears throat> stuff rolling around but not as much as there was this morning and this rough waves coming in is making it really hard to see it's stirring up the sand so you have to have really good vision to see them and then cat like reflexes almost to like catch them before the wave takes and moves it that's the worst when you see something you're like ooh, where's that one thing and then the wave washes it away and you never see it again
almost at the top of this hill, we have this big shell pile here. And this looks like it's kind of older stuff. Some, some bleach shells on the top. But I'm gonna poke through it anyway, dig around a little. but there's waves crashing out there. That's the sandbar we were on this morning, way out there. And now it's all underwater. So we could probably wade out there. It's a little rough today. There's a little bit bigger waves than I would like. And if you're hard on, uh, well, if you're not steady on your feet, you have difficulty with balance, it'd be really hard to wade all the way out there and not get knocked over. Um, that would probably take a good waist deep wade to get over there. And I mean, obviously some spots are gonna be deeper than others, but just to give you a little visual of where we were before and how much the tide has come in, that's a good 50 yards at least from where I'm standing now. like it's thinning out a little bit. It's a lot fewer and fewer shells as I go. It's a little bit of um, a Gorgonian or a sea whip. Another almost coral, not quite coral, maybe soft coral family member. Super fun to use in your um, <clears throat> displays. Those are those deep purple ones, very pretty. But yeah, a lot of these bigger like gastropods, the whelks, the tulips, the cones, even those fighting conks we were seeing a ton of, not a whole lot of them up here in the higher rock lines. Most of them we saw this morning down in where the water is now. And as you can see, there's still shells here. I found a few <clears throat> nice ones, but the quantity is not quite as much. So, and if you like to be the early bird and you want to get all the shells to yourself and the beach without other folks on the beach, and you just want to go first thing in the morning, that can be very peaceful, regardless of how many shells you find. It's a really good mental health break. Oh, here's a paper fig, another lightweight shell. One for the fragile box, for sure. It's got a little crack in it. 